is going on guys? JD from New York here and I'm back this morning with your Monday Night Raw review for last night's show, January 28th, 2013. Raw was live from Las Vegas, Nevada. We seen the Raw Roulette return because we are in Las Vegas. And I'll tell you what guys, I'm not a big fan of the Raw Roulette gimmick. You know, I think it's uh, a segue into uh, silly uh, silly segments and uh, you know, it really doesn't do anything to promote anything at all. Especially if the WWE's coming off such a hot Royal Rumble. This show was just absolutely dreadful at some parts. To the point where, you know, I'm sitting on my couch. I enjoy Monday Night Raw every Monday. I'm sitting down with my hot chocolate. My girlfriend's next to me watching the show. And there were, there were just some segments where you literally had to turn your head because it was just so embarrassing to watch. I mean, we got segments, a Make Me Laugh Challenge with Matt Stryker and Ryback in the ring with the primetime players. Primetime players try to make Matt Stryker laugh. They tell some corny joke. And then Ryback says uh, says some bullshit. And he ends up beating the shit out of primetime players and Matt Stryker. Pointless segment. We got a dance-off between Brodus Clay and Tensai. Where Tensai is dancing in lingerie. I mean, this is the bullshit that the WWE gives us after a Royal Rumble. This is the, the show after the Royal Rumble to build towards the Elimination Chamber. I mean, there were some segments that were great. And, and most of the segments on this show were just absolutely awful. Tensai dancing in lingerie, really? This is what we want to see after the Royal Rumble? Then we get the great Kali and Zack Ryder singing karaoke in the middle of the ring to Shawn Michaels' theme music. Why is the great Kali on my TV after the Royal Rumble? Why is Zack Ryder in the ring? I, I don't believe the fucking creative minds in the WWE. And a lot of people say I complain. If you, if you guys watch my Royal Rumble review, I got a lot of negative comments just because of my opinions on what happened at the Royal Rumble. I don't mean to complain. I've been watching the WWF or WWE for 25 plus years. I have the right to complain when I see shit like this. Yet everybody's getting on my back about, oh, you're a CM Punk mark, this and that, fuck you. Uh, you know, The Rock is better, the CM Punk sucks, fuck Punk. Listen, okay? CM Punk got screwed. There's no way about it. I see it through my eyes. You agree with me or you disagree with me. Punk got screwed. And this is what he talked about in the opening segment of this show. Punk got screwed. He went on to say this is now the Phoenix screw job. This is worse than the Montreal screw job. I wouldn't say it's worse than the Montreal screw job. That's a little bit too much. But Punk was screwed. He really was. He pinned The Rock. No matter how you look at it, he pinned The Rock. I don't give a shit who interfered. The Shield did interfere on his behalf. I didn't know it at the time because The Shield was banned from ringside. I simply thought the WWE was going to give us a swerve because The Shield was banned. I thought it may be somebody else helping the uh, helping CM Punk retain the title. That was my thought. Then come the next morning, before Monday Night Raw, I seen that The Shield did, in fact, help Punk. And then, obviously, on this show, we seen Heyman is in cahoots with The Shield and CM Punk. Paul Heyman is paying The Shield to do his dirty work. But the reason why I was pissed with the WWE Championship match is because Punk pinned The Rock. The Rock is barely moving. He's immobile, dead, out cold outside. The match restarts all because Vince McMahon orders it to. And Punk loses his title reign because of a people's elbow in the most unbelievable manner you could possibly go. It wasn't a small package roll-up. It wasn't to the point where CM Punk couldn't kick out. He got beat by an elbow drop, people. That's believable to you? No, not to me. That's why Punk opened the show saying that this is 435 days of the most historic WWE title reign. Punk got screwed, he said. Okay? Rock is a cheater. Rock is a thief. He took that belt off him. Okay? This is the Phoenix screw job. Vince comes out. Says that Paul Heyman will have a performance review later on tonight. Because he has video proof that he is in cahoots with The Shield. We'll see that later on. I'll get into that. But, the show opened up with Randy Orton versus Antonio Cesaro. Great match. Uh, first match for the Royal Roulette gimmick. This was a special guest referee match. The Miz, obviously. As soon as I knew Antonio Cesaro was in this match with a special guest referee stipulation. We knew The Miz was going to be the special guest referee to continue their feud. Great match. About 15 minutes. Uh, uh, RKO to uh, Cesaro here because The Miz interfered on Orton's behalf. RKO out of nowhere. 1-2-3, Orton gets the victory. 
Uh, at the end, The Miz tries to help Cesaro up after the RKO and then the delivers his finishing move, the Skull Crushing Finale. That's going to continue their feud. I like this feud for both men. Uh, the Miz is a decent enough wrestler, and Cesaro is going to be a star, guys. He's an absolute, absolute beast in the ring. Uh, I enjoy watching him wrestle, uh, and uh, I'm going to enjoy watching his character grow uh, over the next couple of years to the point where I can fully invest in, in that character, and he's, he's just going to be a big-time player in the WWE. Next, we had uh, we had uh, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil, like I said, in the Make Me Laugh Challenge with Ryback. Absolute fucking garbage. This doesn't need to be on the, the Monday Night Raw program after the Royal Rumble. Ryback is from Las Vegas. They should have put him in something a little bit more meaningful here. Um, but that's what they did. And like I said, the WWE creative team is just... I, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. I think they're on some kind of drugs uh, after the Royal Rumble. Because the Royal Rumble was successful, so I guess they were all out celebrating last night and decided to go absolutely fucking lazy with the booking here. But uh, next we had Bo Dallas versus Wade Barrett. We had uh, Bo Dallas actually eliminate Wade Barrett in the Royal Rumble last night. And tonight, or last night rather, Bo Dallas pins Wade Barrett again. Not only did he eliminate him last night, but he pins Wade Barrett. He pins the Intercontinental Champion. He uh, he blocks the Bullhammer and turns it into a power slam for the win out of nowhere. So I, I, I like the way that the WWE is building up Bo Dallas because he is, their, uh, he is one of their top rookies in NXT. And now that they're doing this Intercontinental Title Cup, I think they're going to set up Bo Dallas to challenge Wade Barrett for the, for the Intercontinental Title. I think that's going to be great. Uh, the way, the mid card could use some new guys, some new blood, uh, and this is a great way to build Bo Dallas up to the WWE Universe and the fans. And I applaud Wade Barrett for putting the, the rookie over. I, I like that kind of I like that kind of attitude uh, when um, you know Wade Barrett is. I wouldn't say he's a, he's a veteran. He's still he's still you know a newbie. You know, but he's one of the best that they got. He's going to be a big time player, but. I like that Wade Barrett's putting over Bo Dallas. I think that's very commendable, Wade Barrett. So that's that's good shit right there. Next, we had John Cena versus Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes just got destroyed. Um, match barely lasted two minutes. But the main part of this was uh, what happened after the match. John Cena officially challenged. He didn't challenge The Rock. He didn't challenge CM Punk. He challenged the WWE Champion, whether it was The Rock or CM Punk come WrestleMania. So whoever's the champion going into WrestleMania, John Cena... Is throwing his name in there. He's challenging for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. But after he said that, the Shield comes out, sneak attacks John Cena, uh, you know, and just lays him to waste in the middle of the ring. Then we get Sheamus coming out for the save. He gets the same treatment. Ryback comes out. You see Ryback maybe turning the tides, but the numbers game is too much. Uh, the Shield throws Ryback into the steel steps outside. They do the triple power bomb on Sheamus, take him out of it. Uh, and then, then they delivered the triple power bomb to John Cena, uh, and then the Shield escapes with the crowd. I like I like that this was uh, very well done, um, and the Shield. Uh, you know, I'll get into them a little bit later, but they uh, they're in cahoots with Paul Heyman, pretty much. And I'll, like I said, I'll give you my opinion on that a little bit later in the review. Now, now guys, this is uh, after this we had uh, this stupid fucking dance off, ten side dancing in lingerie with Brodus Clay again. Another segment. That should not be on the show after the Royal Rumble. It's just absolutely fucking dreadful. Uh, and Michael Cole was hilarious. He, he Literally, he just took the words out of my mouth. He said, this is just fucking god-awful. It should not be on the show. Period. Anyway, we had uh, Alberto Del Rio and Ricardo Rodriguez uh, come out uh, for a segment with The Big Show. Now, The Big Show lost last night at the Royal Rumble because he had his feet duct taped to the bottom uh, ring rope. So the Big Show got his revenge. He just literally laid waste to Alberto Del Rio and uh, and Ricardo Rodriguez. So this is going to set up a rematch at the Elimination Chamber. So look forward to that, guys. Uh, it was a very well done segment. I just really don't care about the Big Show. Uh, I'm starting to slowly like Del Rio as a face. I like that the crowd is getting behind him. As soon as he gets more crowd behind him, I think I'll start to like him a, a, a little bit more and more each week. Uh, after after this, we had a uh, Lumberjills match. I'm not even going to get into it because it's a complete waste of time. Uh, the Rock came out for a segment. The Rock hits the ring with the WWE title uh, and says, Tonight is a new era. It's the people's era. He says, uh, Everyone gets pie tonight. And all of a sudden, CM Punk comes out. Uh, he's pissed off as usual. He comes out without Heyman. Punk says Rock is embarrassing both the title and himself. Punk says he made that title special and that The Rock is now flushing everything he did down the toilet. Punk also said that Rock was handed the title like everything else in his crappy, spoon-fed life. Now, I mean, I wouldn't say that, but The Rock really was handed the title because, like I said, Punk should have walked out of the Royal Rumble with the WWE Championship. I wouldn't have minded if The Rock took the title at the Elimination Chamber. I just think 
The Rock was handed the title too soon. He should have won it at the Elimination Chamber. But uh, The Rock tells Punk to come and get it, or you can stand up on that stage like a punk-ass bitch. Punk slowly walks towards the ring, but typical Punk fashion, walks back up the stage and says, You know what, Rock? I'm going to stand up on this stage, and I'm going to be a punk-ass bitch. So now, Punk issues a challenge to The Rock. He says, I'm going to give you a re- I'm going to give you a rematch at the Elimination Chamber. You're not going to give me a rematch. That's my belt. I'm going to grant you a rematch. So The Rock accepts the challenge. A punk says uh, he won't be taking anything away from The Rock. The only thing he's going to be giving out is an ass whooping. And then he, you know, obviously he does this whole spiel if you smell what The Rock is cooking. And Punk storms off to the back. So well, obviously we now we have the Elimination Chamber title match set. The Rock versus CM Punk in a rematch should be fucking awesome. Next, we have Damian Sandow versus Sheamus in a tables match. Good shit, guys. Sandow's a top star in the making. Uh, very, very physical match. Uh, it ended when um, when Sheamus actually delivered the white noise through a table that was laying in the corner of the ring. Great match. I really didn't expect too much of it, but it was a very physical match. Uh, second best match of the night. Uh, and I, I do like the way these two work together. And I, I hope I hope this means the end for Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow. I would love Damian Sandow to be in the singles competition. I would like to go him. I would like for him to go to a singles uh, title uh, and get into, into some kind of feud. Uh, but I do see Sammy, Damian Sandow in the world title hunt by the end of the year. Next, we had uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler and Chris Jericho. Uh, winners here: Kane and Daniel Bryan. I, I, one thing I'll say about this, Chris Jericho and Dolph Ziggler, I cannot wait for this feud to, re, to restart, guys. These two, I love the way they work together. Dolph Ziggler, you know I love Dolph Ziggler. I'm glad Chris Jericho is back. They are setting something up for WrestleMania. He's going to be full-time from now until WrestleMania. There are rumors that he might be fighting Ryback at, at um, WrestleMania right now, where Chris Jericho will be the heel. Um, but... For now, well, I'm just going to enjoy this feud, Dolph Ziggler and Chris Jericho. They, they work absolutely great together. They had a great match at SummerSlam last year, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And finally, guys, we got the performance review from Paul Heyman. Now, Paul Heyman, this segment showed you why Paul Heyman is one of the best in the business. He's absolutely one of the best in the business. He's one of the best of all time. His performance here on the mic was unbelievable, Okay. Then Vince McMahon shows this video footage where Paul Heyman and Brad Maddox are walking uh, in some mankind-looking, uh, you know, bowels of the building uh, type uh, atmosphere. And then all of a sudden, you see the shield pop out of nowhere, and Paul Heyman says, you know, when I pay the shield, when I pay the shield, they get the job done, you know? We pay the shield. That was the main thing out of that. We pay the shield. So obviously Paul Heyman and the shield are now in cahoots. Now we know it was the Shield that attacked The Rock at the Royal Rumble. It's it's now now we know that the Shield has been working with CM Punk and Paul Heyman all these weeks since their debut. So Vince uncovered this footage. He was about to fire Vince. Uh, he was about to fire Paul Heyman, and all of a sudden, you know, you've seen it from a mile away, but you know, you, there's no, you had to pop for it. Brock Lesnar comes out and intervenes in this whole performance review. He say, he tells Paul Heyman to get out of the ring. I got this. He looks Vince McMahon face-to-face, nose-to-nose, and you knew what was coming. Brock Lesnar returns, an F5 on Vince McMahon, a fucking brutal F5. Vince McMahon is a trooper. One of the best F5s I've ever seen. Laid Vince McMahon to waste. Now they're doing an injury angle where Vince McMahon has a broken pelvis. Stephanie McMahon was out after the cameras went off. They rolled Vince McMahon out into the ambulance. Obviously, this is going to set up. Triple H coming back and challenging Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, where Triple H gets his revenge on Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is now signed through WrestleMania 2014, guys. He did sign another two-year extension, so he'll be at he'll be uh, in WWE all through this year and all through next year. So look forward to that. This was the saving grace of this show. Otherwise, the show was dreadful, guys. I'm glad Brock Lesnar came back. Leave it to Brock Lesnar to come back and make a dreadful show somewhat newsworthy. I'm glad Lesnar's back. I look forward to seeing him, and uh, we'll see what happens from here on out, guys, but I really don't want to see Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. Uh, if it was my choice, I'd have uh, Vince McMahon come out and say, The Undertaker is going to challenge you. The Undertaker's going to do my dirty work and get my revenge against you at WrestleMania, but that's just me. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, I'm out. WWE News and Rumors later this week. Uh, leave, me, leave me your comments, your ratings, and uh, if you have not done so, subscribe, and that's it, guys. I'm out.